Two years ago, we had an emergency haul out after we found a two foot crack in our boat while sailing across the Caribbean Sea. We are currently taking on water faster than we can alleviate. But this time, we actually scheduled the haul out. This is the most stressful part. For what we hoped would be a simple 10 day out of the water, paint the bottom, fix a thing or two, and then back in the water to sail off into the sunset. But something is telling me that it's not gonna be that easy. I think this boat shot. Not sure if you can hear the hustle and bustle and the, the loud diesel motor, but. We're just trying to enjoy our coffee and they are on top of things yeah, here. Yeah, so we are getting hauled out right now. The trick is trying to get the straps lined up to where the bulkheads are, that way we don't break the boat. <laughs> They're unable to adjust the distance of the straps between each other, so it is what it is. We tried to get it close to the bulkheads, but it's not exact. For any of you guys who have boats and have held the hauled out before, I know you know that this is the most stressful part of your of the time of being hauled out. She's a little crooked, huh? She's a little crooked. I think they're on it. He's up front checking it out. Okay. We have quite the audience. <laughs> I don't think they get too many sailboats that get hauled out here, so. So, you know how we've always said maybe we get a bigger boat? <laughs> this is when you're like, yes, I'm so happy that our boat is smaller than what we would like to have. Because it won't take us as long. Yeah, it's straightened out now. The moment they take the straps off, and, it's, bueno. and it still stays up. Instead of scraping for hours, just paying the guys to give it a quick blast. Save a lot of time, help these guys out, help us out. Because we're gonna need it. We've got a lot of sanding to do. It's an absolute disaster in Sosha right now, but we've got her all closed up and the AC is running right now. So it's actually pretty nice in here. We're actually gonna raise the water line. So I'm gonna put tape where we don't want um, the paint to get all scuffed up. Brandy is out and about right now. She's gonna actually go get another schmock, <laughs> one of those marshmallow suits so she can help me sand. Hopefully she'll be back soon. I'm sure she'll be happy that the AC is working. We got some friends sleeping under the boat. You guys aren't gonna wanna stay here much longer. It's gonna get dusty. This is our zinc bar. The zinc's doing pretty well. It was a big chunk of zinc. It's actually lasted quite a long time. I do have a replacement, but there's a lot of life still left in this, at least another year. So I'm gonna leave it on here. Working on this through hull. This is the one for our water maker it is leaking. I thought it just needed to be tightened up a little bit, but it looks like it's actually pitted on the tapered part that seals it off. So this whole thing just needs to be replaced. Now that this has been diagnosed, I gotta rip it out. Oh me, oh After a little pounding, I was able to get this out. I actually had to grind it off and I'm actually probably just gonna fill this guy. I'm just gonna grind it down, make a, make a big old grind area, taper it, and then fiberglass over it. Time to get the party started. It's a little late in the day, but that's okay. But first, I gotta do a quick change. Those are our stairs right there. <laughs> it's interesting getting in 
and out of the boat. Today we're just going to be doing more sanding. I just need to finish up sanding the starboard side of the boat and then I'll go back over what Brandy did and see if I can't knock it down anymore. Since we're electric, we don't have a raw water intake. We plugged that up back in Fort Pierce. Now we're going to plug up where I was using the seacock for making water and we're going to move that to this paddle wheel this paddle wheel has never worked, and we actually recently bought a depth sounder with a paddle wheel in it because we thought our depth sounder broke. So we'll replace that one out and see if that we can get that paddle wheel to work. But this is where we'll put in the the raw the intake for the water maker. So I need to grind out that hole do a 12 to 1 radius and glass it over. Today, we're gonna try to keep the water out of Sersha. Stop Sersha from slowly sinking. She's just been leaking pretty much since the day we left the boatyard. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think from day one. I don't know. There's so much going on that if she was, we didn't notice until, you know, down the road. There's these two little holes that allows you access to the pin, and there's always been water filling these holes yeah, so there's two compartments i guess bilges next to them and they it just sits here the water just sits here so we're trying to find where this leak could be possibly coming from anywhere in the boat it could be the keel bolts we're thinking maybe it's the stuffing box the stuffing box for the rudder post the I actually I know there's water leaking yeah. in through there because I've seen it. Yeah. I'm just not sure if it's coming from the base, like a poor mounting or just it's just corroded there. Or hopefully it's coming from the stuffing box itself because that's a much easier fix. So we're going to get all the water out of here and then put the green stuff on the bolts and see if that helps with the leak. And we actually had seen in... Well, I've seen in the Pearson forum group that I'm a part of, that we're a part of, a lot of other people who have 35s have had this issue. So it'd be really interesting to see if this fix works. Because we had other leaks, we don't know if this pin is actually leaking or not. Right. So I mean, we have leaks in the Ford berth, so mm. or it, uh, it could be coming from outside. We don't know. Rails, so just want to make yeah. sure to get the water out now that we're not in the water so we know that it's not leaking and and if, we can actually open it up and not have to worry about sinking <laughs> and if we can get it all sealed up and then water does come in then we'll know for sure that it's coming from somewhere else in the boat when you own a boat and you find a random piece of hardware laying in the boat you're always like where did that come from ready tidy lefty lucy oh <laughs> Maybe that's why it was leaking? It's, it's so super loose. loose. That, like I didn't even have to really put any muscle in it at all. That's, can I do it by my hand? No. Either really loose or you're just really strong. Without knowing it? Yeah. Oh no, this is just really loose. So this goes into the center board. So the pin is what? where the centerboard pivots off of. Right. Yeah. And this, there's like a sleeve 
that the pin goes through. So all we're gonna do, we're not taking the pin out, we're just... Loosening it up? We're taking the caps off, okay. and then putting the green stuff so on. So this is just caps? These are just, yeah, they keep the water out. Clearly not! Well, <laughs> we'll see. Keep mentioning green stuff, and you guys are like, what the hell is green stuff? Literally, it's called. The focus is like, it's, it's avoiding me. Look at that. That's so funny. It's called green stuff. Green stuff. Not, not to be confused with the green goop. Yeah, not the green underwater epoxy green goop stuff. This is actually green stuff. At the plumbing shop back in Fort Pierce that I went to, all the guys there swore by this stuff and they were quoting other plumbers. Either that or they're just really good salesmen and they sold me on it. But I have used it. I used it for our center board. We have copper tubing and different elbow fittings and stuff. I used this on it and it worked really well. So hopefully it'll do the trick for this. It doesn't actually cure. It gets around the threads and like kind of stays wet but it, it seals the water off. Ooh, is that good? Let's what is see. that stuff down there? Oh. What's this? I think. What I is that? I think that's 5200. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because I was trying to seal it off. I don't think that worked. Is there green goop on there too? Yep, I mean, there's green. Uh, that might be corrosion though. I think I think I put those on before I knew about the green stuff. Mm. We probably should clean this, huh? Yeah, clean it. And then put the green goop on. Okay. So from what I remember, the guys at the plumbing shop said that this stuff, you apply it to the threads. And then after like an hour or a few hours, it'll drip a little bit, but it'll slowly start to not drip. And that's pretty much what happened the first time I used it. I used it and I was like, what the hell? This is not working. And then over time it eventually cured enough to where it just didn't leak at all. And that was three years ago that I used it in the one spot. And it's still working well so give it a go what happened it's pouring out right here can you see it moving oh wow yeah. it's going quick yeah so this was dry and now it's i don't know an inch full now maybe what is that a half an inch and it's just i can tell it's pouring water. out from here so our keel is probably full of water <gasps> look at it yeah it's like pouring oh, out shoot. Can we release it from somewhere outside? Yeah, I mean, I guess I can get underneath the keel. And this side's the same. Like, I look at it, it's already filled up, too. I've been pulling this back. I mean, it's just, this is just a fiberglass shell. Right. I mean, you can tell this is just... Well, the issue is it's coming from our encapsulated keel. Yeah. Should we just pick at it and see how far it goes down? I guess so. I mean, it looks like water is getting into our ballast, which is iron. Or what do they what do they use? Um, is there something around the, the iron? Fiberglass. It, it's just like sand. Yeah, it's not good. And it's just like slowly dripping out. It's it's either that or like in the centerboard area is where it's seeping through. I, I'm hoping that's what it is and it's not, but which is still not good because it just means the whole inside, the whole ballast is just covered in water. <sighs> I think this boat shot. I don't see that. But, so what does it mean that we have to do? Research? I have no idea. Go grind, grind, I, grind. I mean, we 
can grind, yeah, see what's going on initially right here. Maybe just stick a screwdriver in and just pick at it until we hit something where it looks like we can see what it is. I, I don't I don't know. Is it gonna cause a catastrophic failure while we're sailing? I'm not sure. I have no idea. We're gonna have to get Hensley to lift this up. Yeah. So we can drop the center board and get in there and see what's going on. So the center get forward gets pulled up into here. So this doesn't have anything to do with center board. This is just no, where it hinges it, out, right? It might have to do with the housing, the center board housing. Like if the fiberglass up in there is not intact. Then is this the housing right here? This is the housing right here. It's not very big. This is, is this the housing. Too? This, this is, is the, the keel. This is the actual keel. Which is it, which iron. Which is iron. Yeah. It's the ballast. So it's somehow getting into the ballast. And I bet you it's full of water. That's why our water line's so low. <laughs> I mean, is this a better case scenario than it being like in the hull? I, it's not a good scenario because there's if there's water sitting on fiberglass then there's d lamb happening and all it's gonna take if i mean maybe that's but where our crack happened what? there's no keel though yeah right. what yeah i mean yeah it was all d lambed that whole area up, up front was d lambed for now what i can do is grind down the fiberglass underneath the boat mm. and see and if, if that's leaking out. and Where then we're gonna have to refiberglass all of that though maybe for now i can just drill a couple holes Wait. and see do you want to do that now yeah i guess so another thing that could be happening or what could have happened is that as we get water in the bilge, it would seep into our encapsulated area from this area, from mm -hmm. the top part, just from that hole. Hopefully that's the case and it's not seeping in through some other external spot. How will we find that out? We just have to thoroughly investigate the whole boat. Maybe we need to stay here longer. We have to start digging a hole underneath the Sersha so we can get to it if we have to. Perhaps. Perhaps. So we were able to suck out all, well, as much water as we could from uh, the pin area. And it's dry. And it's, now. it's, it's dry. It's moist but dry. It's right. not leaking in. But I was literally sucking water out of the hole. Yeah. Um, water wasn't coming out of the hole anymore, but it was still sitting in the encapsulated area, which isn't good because it's just going to, it's going to cause delamination. Yeah. How long does that take to dry out? <sighs> We're going to have to like punch holes into the keel to see if it's. We should probably punch holes all throughout the keel. Yeah. Just like I said, like I wanted to strip the boat. We might end up stripping the boat. Yeah, we got the. All the same paper to do so. This is a lot of work. <laughs> Alright, now we're gonna suck out the bilge and hope that water doesn't keep gushing into the bilge. But if it does, well, and then we're gonna go outside and drill a couple holes at the bottom of the uh, keel and see if water pours out of it or not but uh i know this is all serious and stuff but you like my socks <laughs> these are brandy's old snowboarding socks but they're long they're like the only long socks we have so i was gonna try to protect my my ankles from mosquitoes <laughs> the rest of the body's fair game but you know at least my ankles are safe yes Apologies, I keep saying iron, but it's lead. I was like, it's not iron. What is it? Lead. So, 
it looks like the ballast starts just shy of where our engine compartment is and then runs forward about six or seven, well, eight to 10 feet forward. So right now we're kind of tilted backwards. This is how we were set. We're blocked up. So it should help our case. Now we're gonna try to get the very corners and drill two holes in either each corner and see if water gushes out or not. We're thinking it's gonna gush out. Ready? Yeah, yes. <laughs> not really. Jesus, this is thick. <laughs> Man. Is that the fiberglass? Yeah, I think. Oh. That's. That is lead. Nothing. Nothing there. Is that water? Yeah. It's like bubbling. Yeah, that's coming from the inside. <gasps> oh, oh no. Oh my gosh. Sinking from the inside. Ugh. It's gotta be, it, it's 100% salt water. Yeah. Definitely salt water. So that that you're drilling into there is just all this is oh, this no. is um lead. So I, I think the the ballast ends about here. -ish. Okay. But it's dry here. It is. It I looks mean, wet. Dry-ish. <laughs> but the further we we're gonna have to go down to the fiberglass, aren't we? Should we start sanding now? <laughs> I mean, that would cause DLAM on the inside, from the inside out, right? This is so thick, but yes, eventually over time it would. This stuff is so thick that it would take a long, long time. Ooh, that smells like you're kidding. Oh, gross. So when you drill underneath, it's not coming out though. No, like I said, the way that the lead's shaped, it's sealing it off at the very bottom. But for whatever reason, there's a cavity between the fiberglass and the lead right here. But I drilled this first hole and it was just black, nasty, organic. It smells really bad. Smells like death. But yeah, we, we're gonna need to grind all this out. That's good at least. What? 
seem like any more water. No, it's really dry right there, right? Yeah. Or is it just because it's not? I really might have dry? tapped into the bilge area right there, though. We're kind of oh. pushing the edge of where oh, the so where the lead cavity is. Because the drill went all the way in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the, that's the build. Oh, we didn't have to actually suck it out. We could just let it drain out. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is you had the bilge area, and then right. there's a fiberglass wall. Right. Which is a good thing, because then it's not the fiberglass. I mean, in Oh, it smells so bad. In hindsight, we should have probably just drilled it from the freaking Inside bilge. of the bilge? Yeah. Instead of doing it all out here? Yeah. But, nah, we we, we need, need to find out need, where it's at. Well, we need to grind this away to let it dry, I think. To properly Are we going to have to, like, open the whole entire bottom of the boat? Is I, that what we you're should, saying? I'm saying we should kind of open it up a little bit. I don't know. I think we need some sort of expert opinion. Hey, uh... Strange brew is what we're used to. Because we had other leaks, we don't know. 